Hey, Happy New Year and welcome to the January 2016 edition of The Trainer. Last November we talked about reading voltage on the ground side of the circuit. This time we're going to talk about reading it on the positive side. Keep watching. Now, if you didn't get a chance to watch the November edition of the trainer, look for the link down in the video description. You may want to go ahead and watch that first before you go ahead and proceed with the January edition. In November, I showed you how reading voltage on the ground side of the circuit was a bad thing. After all, the voltage is supposed to be consumed by the load in the circuit, so there should be very little, if anything, left over on the ground side. If we can measure any leftovers, that means there's a secondary unwanted resistance somewhere in the ground path between where you're measuring and the battery negative post. Today's question is, can we use that same method on the positive side of the circuit? Well, we can, but it can be a little confusing. Let's go through it and I'll explain and show you what I mean. Well, when I first started learning voltage drop testing, I was taught to take three measurements. The first was to measure the voltage at the battery. Make a note of that. The next measurement was to take a measurement uh, as close to the load as you could get on the positive side of the circuit. Measure that, or rather record that. But then you had to do a little math. You had to subtract the two from one another. That would be the voltage drop in the system. Well, that sounds like a little extra work, doesn't it? After all, the meter is designed to measure the voltage potential where? Between its leads. So why don't I let the meter do the math? And how do we do that? Very simple. Just take the negative meter test lead that you had on the negative post of the battery and move it over to the positive. Now I'm testing between this point and here on our little cardboard mock-up. I'm testing between these two areas. So any voltage drop that exists is going to be the voltage drop in that section of the circuit. We'll get a reading on that and look at that. That math kind of lined right up, didn't it? I guarantee I didn't plan it that way. But as you can see, the circuit has now done the math for me. What if I got a reading like this one? Ah, the beauty of video. If I'm gonna read six point something volts but between this point and this point, when there are no loads that are supposed to be there to consume that voltage, that's telling me in a big red flag that something's wrong between those two leads just like it did on the ground side. So save a step, let the meter do the math, use the meter what it's designed to do, measure that potential between its two leads, and change your voltage drop testing up just a wee bit. Start off by placing your, your negative meter lead on the positive side of the battery, and then measure to the positive side of the load as close as you can get. That number, whatever it is, is the voltage drop in that leg of the circuit. And if it's significant, more than a few tenths of a volt, that could be the cause of your problem. Let me just say it real quickly, if you find a problem related to voltage drop, it's not gonna be a matter of a few tenths, it's gonna be big, you'll see it, don't worry. When you're gonna test the negative side of the circuit, all we have to do now is move the meter lead, the negative meter lead over to the negative battery post, and then use the same positive meter lead as our test probe, move it to the ground side. Again, just like we showed you in the November video, you see a number there, that's a flag. That means the pro there's a problem on the ground side, and where's it gonna be? Right between those two test leads. Well, I hope this tip helps you uh, with your electrical troubleshooting, and uh, that's all the time I got for this episode of The Trainer. I'll see you next month.